dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Elizabeth Scott in The Triumphant Road, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your theater of stars. The word glamour certainly belongs to our lovely star, Elizabeth Scott. Yet in addition to being one of the most glamorous stars in Hollywood, Miss Scott is also one of the most versatile. And here on Proudly We Hail, we're happy to give her a brief vacation from the role she has been playing as we ready the curtain for Act One of The Triumphant Road. You'll hear Miss Scott as Catherine Vincent, the girl who knew what she wanted, fought for it, and won it. But now, before the curtain rises, this brief message from Wendell Niles. The greatest of weapons is education, and that is the most powerful weapon of your regular army and U.S. Air Force today. For your soldiers and airmen are continuing their education throughout their service. In the first place, they are selected for their intelligence and ability to learn. Then they receive the finest vocational training in the world, as well as cultural education along the lines they choose. And education means peace. Give your army and Air Force men the support they deserve. Now again, at the microphone, our producer. And now, Act One of The Triumphant Road, starring Elizabeth Scott as Catherine Vincent. This is the story of Catherine Vincent, the lovely, sophisticated daughter of the Newport Vincents, whose debut at the Waldorf Astoria once made headlines. And Vinnie, as her friends called her, probably never dreamed that she would quite suddenly find herself living in Littleton, USA, the biggest little city in the world. The Grand Central Station would become simply the depot. The Central Park would become City Park. That Madison Avenue would become Main Street. I didn't dream that it would happen, but sometimes events move quickly. There'd been the tragedy in my family, the funeral, the lawyers checking into my father's business, and then the decision. I left school at Bryn Mawr and took the train west to live with my Uncle Fred. He was at the station to meet me. Vinnie, do we have all your bags? I think so, Uncle Fred. Yeah, the car's over this way. Well, Vinnie, welcome to your new home. Thank you. We won't talk about what's happened. You know how I feel. Yes, Uncle Fred. But I think you like it here. I'll keep you busy at the restaurant. I want to keep busy. There's no reason why you can't finish your schooling. Are we one of the finest normal schools in the country here? Well, here's the car. I'll put your bags in. You won't find it lonely here as soon as you get acquainted. Howdy, Mr. Vincent. Oh, hello, Horace. Who is that? Oh, Horace Jones. Comes from a very fine family here. Now, there's a young man I want you to get acquainted with. I met Horace Jones soon enough. He seemed strange like all the rest. The town, the people, the college... Horace had a habit of swooping down in that car of his like, like one afternoon when I was walking home from school. Taxi? Taxi! Oh, Horace, please. You don't have to scare me to death. Ah, uh, Vinny, I didn't mean anything. You want to ride home? No, thank you. I prefer to walk. All right, Vinny, but you'll be sorry. Not every girl in town gets a chance to ride in this car. I see you decided to walk. Not that I blame you. Why, yes. And my way, too. You mind if I tag along? Why not? Remember me? I'm... Um, I'm not sure. I'm Bill Edwards. I'm in a couple of classes of yours. Oh, yes. And you're Vinnie Vincent. You know. Oh, yes. Say, tell me, how do you become a genius? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it all seems so easy for you. Oh, just a matter of study. Eh, not with me. I need more than that. A life raft, maybe. I, I need help. <laughs> well, drop over some night. We'll work out the problem. I was hoping you'd say that. Vinny, I bow to you. I've learned more from you tonight than three months in a classroom. Thank you. Vinny, uh, what brought you out here from New York? Events. No, but how could you ever trade that for this? I had to. 
But you don't belong in this town. Why, Vinny? How come? Well, if you must know, I... I lost my parents in an automobile accident. Uncle Fred offered me his home. Oh, I'm sorry, Vinny. I... I didn't know. That's all right. Vinny, I... I want to be your friend. I, I want you to let me be a good friend of yours. Bill and I became very close friends. Despite Uncle Fred, who always was talking about Horace and his family, could... Could Uncle Fred know what I was thinking? Dreaming? Well, the winter turned to spring with commencement week not far away. And that one spring evening, as I walked into the living room, Uncle Fred looked up at me. Say, what are you all dressed up about? I didn't know I was. Huh? Somebody must be coming over. Well? Well, who? I know it couldn't be Horace Jones. If you must know, Bill's coming over. Oh, that fellow always spouting off. Walkie-talkie, walkie-talkie. That young man belongs in radio. As a matter of fact, that's precisely what he plans to get into. And I think Bill is very nice. Yeah. You should be studying for your examinations. That's why Bill is coming over. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, Vinny. What do you mean? You'll wait a long while before you find a young man who can give you the comfort, the family, and the security Horace Jones can. Somebody mentioned my name. Uh, well, Horace, how are you, my boy? Howdy, Mr. Vincent. Hello, Vinny. Horace. Just drop by to tell you the good news. My father says I get my new car for graduation. Oh, it's a Lulu. A 145-horsepower motor, radio, heater, twin spots, fog lights. <laughs> what, no television? Say, that's an idea. Bill! Oh, hello, Vinny. Say, don't you look charming. Hello, Mr. Vincent. Hello, young man. And horse face. The name is Horace. Bill, we'd better get to work. Yeah, I guess so. That final's gonna be tough. Hmm, well, I guess I'll be going. Uh, don't run away, Horace. Come on in the other room. Tell me about that new car of yours. And, by the way, how is that to your father? How are you, Vinny? Fine. Surprise. I brought something over for you. A gardenia. Oh, Bill, you're a darling. <laughs> I really should do a lot more. You know, I'd never be graduating this year if it weren't for you, brain. Oh, not that, Bill. Hey, what makes you so smart, Vinny? Bill. And so elegant. Bill, we'd better get to work. Oh, who can work on a night like this? We can, and we must. But it's such a lovely evening. Bill? Okay, slave driver. Okay. Uh-oh, somebody outside. Come on, let's see who it is. All right. Well, Nancy. Hello, Bill. I thought I'd find you here. Hello, Vinnie. Hello, Nancy. Bill, there's a wonderful new orchestra out at Lakeside just waiting for us to hear it. You tempt me, but we had planned to study. Oh. How about it, Vinnie? It's, it's up to you, Bill. Oh, such a lovely night to waste on books, Bill. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh-huh. Well, as a matter of fact, you are right. <laughs> Come on, Vinnie. Oh, no, I, I'd better not. No? No, thank you. Oh, Okay. You don't mind, Vinny, do you? Oh, no. Not at all. Oh, Vinny's such a good sport. The best in the world. Well, we'll get together tomorrow, Vinny. All right, Bill. Goodbye. Bill did get over the next night, and he crammed enough to pass his final. Events moved quickly. Commencement week and all the affairs. And finally, the dance. I was very busy at home and at the restaurant with Uncle Fred, but I'd hoped that Bill would ask me to the dance. And one afternoon, he stopped in at the restaurant. Hello, Vinny. Bill, you surprised me. Well, I just dropped down. I uh, was wondering about the dance. Yes, Bill, yes? I thought we could go together. All of us. Uh, all of us? Sure, Nancy and myself, you and Horace. You will be going with Horace, won't you? Why, uh, well, yes, I, I guess so. Well, great. I'll arrange it with him. I felt like two cents. And not the kind you ring up on a cash register. Still the brain. Oh, well. And there at home, the night of the dance, Uncle Fred was in a gay mood. Almost too gay. Well, my dear, let me look at you. Like? A picture. A picture. And I'm so glad you're going with Horace. You know, I talked to Horace's father today. And they're making plans. Uncle Fred... Have you been down in the cellar? Why, no. And into that apple jar? Why, honest, Vinny, honest. You promised me you wouldn't. Oh, so I did it. And I will keep my promise so healthy. Oh, dear, that's Horace. Uh, good night, my dear. Have a good time. I'm coming. Good night, Uncle Fred. Good night. Hello, Horace. Howdy, Vinny. Well, there she is. What? My new car. 
It's beautiful, Horace. Get in, but don't slam the door. I won't. Oh, listen to that motor. Is that power or isn't it? That's power, I guess. But you haven't heard what I've got on this car. The horns. Listen. Nice, huh? Well, loud. Oh, but I'm saving the best until last. This special button underneath the dash. Listen to them all together. And then, the climax. <laughs> Isn't that something? Isn't that the ultimate? That is the ultimate, Horace. And only you could have dreamed it up. We arrived at the dance, and from the moment we got there, I began to look for Bill. He finally arrived, Nancy on his arm. I had to fight down a, a sense of jealousy, but I made it. And Horace. Horace, who belonged on a ballroom floor like, like a Notre Dame tackle in the ballet. I thought Bill would never cut in. Excuse me, Horace, may I cut in? Why, sure, when you talk like that. You having fun, Vinny? Oh, yes. I think we can slip outside for a minute. I want to talk to you. Of course. It's nice out, isn't it? It's lovely. Vinny, why do I always come to you when I need help? I don't know. What is it, Bill? Well, I'm taking my audition at the radio station here in town tomorrow, and I'm scared to death. <laughs> is that all? You don't know. Oh, yes, but I do. It's very easy. You go down there tomorrow and, and think that you're the very best, the very finest, which you are. And tomorrow, you'll have your job. If I just had your confidence. You have. You always think this way? I try to. You never miss, do you? I keep thinking I won't. You know, I've been trying to remember what you remind me of. What, Bill? Well, the cameo my mother wanted for. When she passed away, I gave it to my sister. Bill? Yes? I... I think we should get back. We took the short way home that night. After the dance, I... I wanted to get home, to get somewhere. And when we drove up in front of the house, I... I realized something was wrong inside. The lights were all on, and... And Uncle Fred never left more than one light. I grabbed Horace's arm and we, we ran into the house. Uncle Fred was on the couch. What is it, Uncle Fred? Oh, it's my liver acting up, Vinny. Something terrible. I'm afraid it's the finish. Mm-hmm. Take good care of the restaurant, Vinny. And remember, whatever you do, slice the ham thin. You? How dare you talk like that? This is it, Vinny. I, I feel it. You broke your promise about the Applejack, didn't you? Only slightly, Vinny, but that isn't it. It most assuredly is. Now, you get up off that couch right this minute. There's nothing the matter with you. But, Vinny... You heard me. Get up off that couch and march up to bed. Horace, you help me. Yes, Vinny. And right now, I'm going to fix that Applejack once oh, and for all. Vinny! Oh... oh. oh you must feel terrible, Mr. Vincent. Oh, you'll never know, my boy. You'll never know. We pause briefly from our story, The Triumphant Road, starring Elizabeth Scott, to bring you an important message. Attention, veterans. If you've served abroad after September 1st, 1945, you'll want to hear this. You can now enlist in one of the eight well-known outfits now stationed in the United States and you'll be guaranteed at least three years with that unit. Here are the organizations you may choose from. The 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 82nd Airborne, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. You probably recognize those famous outfits, veterans, or maybe you served in one of them. Remember, if you've been on duty outside the United States in any of the armed forces since September 1st, 1945, you are eligible to apply and you'll stay with the outfit you choose for at least three years. In addition, you may re-enlist in grades through sergeant. Ask at your local Army recruiting office for the details first thing tomorrow. And now act two of The Triumphant Road, starring Elizabeth Scott as Catherine Vincent. Having once and for all corrected Uncle Fred's penchant for Applejack, 
Vinny's thoughts turn naturally enough to Bill Edwards, who by now has become a successful announcer in a small radio station in Littleton. Yes, I thought of Bill, even though I didn't see him often. And when I did, he was always with Nancy. It was nice to hear his voice, though, and, and to know that at least he was near. It was like it always was. Bill came to me only when he was in trouble. One evening, Horace had called, said he was coming over. Uncle Fred was very pleased. Well, Vinny, my dear, I understand Horace is coming over tonight. That's right, but how did you know? A little bird. I was talking to Horace's father. Well, don't be making a lot of plans. We're, we're out of the dark ages, you know. I don't see why you object to Horace. Well, he has everything. According to your way of thinking, he has. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Vinny. Why, Bill. How have you been, and where have you been keeping yourself? A fine thing to ask me. Vinny, I want to see you. All right. When? Well, right away. Oh, but gee, I'm stuck down here at the station. Could you come down? Why... Why, of course, Bill. I'll be right down. Oh, thanks, Vinny. Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye. Uh, Uncle Fred, I've got to go downtown. Go downtown? But Horace is coming over. I'm sorry, darling, but this is important. Who was that on the phone? Oh, don't answer that question. It was that walkie-talkie friend of yours. Right. How did you guess it? Because you start to vibrate every time you even hear his name. Vinny, you're making a mistake. I spotted him from the moment I laid eyes on him. No good. You shouldn't say that about anyone, darling. Oh, and tell Horace not to wait if I'm too long. Goodbye. No, I will not. And you better hurry back. I rushed down to the radio station as fast as I could. And there he was, that troubled look on his face, shifting from one foot to the other as he spoke. Vinny, it was swell of you to come down. What did you expect? Oh, I knew you'd come all right. Vinny, I have a decision to make. Yes, Bill? A few weeks ago, there was a big radio man came through from New York. He, he offered me a job there. I have to wire tonight. A job in, in New York? Yeah, that's right. But that means you'll be leaving here. Yeah, Vinny. Oh, but you're doing so well. Oh, I'm doing well enough, but Vinny, I want to go up to the very top, only it, it really scares me a little. New York's such a big town. Bill, if, if that's the only thing that's keeping you, you, you must go. By all means, you must. Wire them that you're coming that you're leaving as soon as you can. That's all I wanted you to say. When... when do you think you'll get away? Well, I'm going to try to get away tomorrow. You'll come down to the train, Vinny? Yes, Bill, I will. Always the struggle to do the right thing. And in this case, I was very proud of myself. How I hated to see Bill leave. When I returned home, Uncle Fred was at the door to meet me, a bit on the frantic side. Where have you been? I told you I was going out. But Horace is here, and more than that, his father. Oh, dear. And now come in, and, and please, Vinny, be nice to Horace. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones, you know my niece, Vinny? <laughs> Why, of course I do. I've seen you running around in my son's convertible. Hello, Mr. Jones. Horace. Hello, Vinny. Well, you look charming, Catherine. Uh, now, Horace, remember what I said? Yes, Father. <laughs> uh, Fred, shall we go in the next room and leave the uh, young couple alone? Why, I think that's an excellent idea, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> well, now that they've gone, Vinny, how are you? I like to think that I'm sensational. Sometimes you puzzle me. Hey, Vinny, I got a new horn for my car. You did? A moose call. How appropriate. I, I don't know quite how to take that. I didn't mean anything by that. What is all this, anyway? Well, <clears throat> Father says there's a time in every man's life when he should settle down. Oh, Horace, you're not going to propose to me. Why, Vinny? Not after what I've gone through today. Why, Vinny, I, I didn't think I could affect you so. Oh, Horace, please. Then you will? No, Horace. Then you won't? Yes, Horace. But you're supposed to go up to our mountain lodge tomorrow, and we're supposed to announce our engagement, and you're supposed to say yes. And who says so? My father. Horace, I've tried to say no politely. You can't say no to my father. I can't, huh? No! And get out of my sight. But, Vinny, you've got to understand. Vinny, what's the oh, matter? Oh, please, Where are Uncle you going? Fred, I want to go upstairs to my... Hey, what's going on here, Horace? Father, she said no. Uh, well, well. If a Jones is not good enough for her, um, come along, Horace. Never mind, Father. I've got more girls waiting for me than I have effects on my car. <laughs> Thank you.
That was a day I've long since forgotten. The next day, Bill phoned. I went down to say goodbye to him. Vinny, 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 why the frown? You're usually the happiness girl in person. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a big farewell party, isn't it? Just you and me. Big enough? I ah, thought Nancy would come down. She went up to the lodge with Horace Jones. Oh, oh. Well, Vinny? Yes, Bill? I'll miss you, Vinny. I'll miss you, Bill, so much. Write me, won't you? You know me, I'll do my best. It's funny, but for the first time, you look different, Vinny. I do. What? What? Vinny, I'm going to tell you something quickly. When I'm set, Vinny, that big wind, will you come to New York? Oh, yes, Bill. Kiss me quick, darling. <sighs> Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye. I had my first letter from Bill a few days later, and then the letters came often, but no mention of his work. Horace and Nancy were married. It was quite the gala event. They spent their honeymoon in New York. And when Nancy returned, she came down to the restaurant. Well, hello, Vinny. Hello, Nancy. When did you get back? Just returned. I don't think you saw my ring. Oh, it's lovely. Three and a half carats. Emerald cut. Does it tire your arm? <laughs> Why, no. No, silly. By the way, I saw an old friend of ours in New York. You did? Who? Bill Edwards. He was driving along Park Avenue in a car about a block long. He must be doing quite well. Or, uh, do you hear from him? I didn't like to hear that at all. Bill would surely have written me. For the first time in a long time, I... I felt it difficult to think straight. I had an, an ominous feeling. It seemed inevitable that something terrible was in the wind. And the inevitable happened. Extra, extra, read all about it. Local boy involved in big New York embezzlement. Extra. Give me a paper. Oh, there you are, lady. Thank you. Extra, read all about it. Extra, extra. Bill Edwards is little too... Oh, no. Bill, no. I rushed home. Uncle Fred was waiting at the door. He had heard the news, too. Well, I told you. I warned you about him. Get out of my way. Where are you going? I'm going to him. I got a plane that afternoon. I was in New York that evening. All the way, I tried so hard to do as I had so often told Bill to do. Into LaGuardia, I grabbed a cab from Manhattan and police headquarters. Bill was there when I walked in. Bill. Oh, Bill. Vinny. Oh, I knew you'd come. Bill, what happened? Nothing, Vinny. I, I wired you. I tried to stop you, but oh, I'm so glad I didn't. But, Bill, it's, it's all over the newspaper. It's my own stupid pride, Vinny. I, I didn't even write you about but, it. But what happened exactly, Bill? Oh, I lost my job the second week in New York. Too much of the corn belt, they said. I had to get a job, any job. Well, that's how I got involved in all this. I was only the chauffeur for the embezzler. Then you're entirely in the clear, Bill. Absolutely. The newspapers are printing a, a complete retraction. Uh, but I really let you down, I'm afraid, Benny. There's an announcer here in New York. Oh, let's go home, Bill. You were a very big announcer there. Very big. The curtain falls on the final act of The Triumphant Road. Our star, Elizabeth Scott, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, listen to these names. The 2nd Infantry Division, 4th Infantry, 5th Infantry. Remember that? The 9th Infantry, everybody's heard of them. The 2nd Armored, Patton's Men. The 3rd Armored, the 82nd Airborne, America's Guard of Honor. And the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. 
What memories do these unit designations bring back? If you've served outside the U.S. with any of the armed forces after September 1st, 1945, you can now join one of these famous army outfits. Yes, you have your choice. They're all stationed in this country now, and you'll be guaranteed at least three years with the one you choose. And there's a good chance you can re-enlist in non-commissioned grade. Why don't you ask your local army recruiting officer right away how you can be a member of one of these well-known outfits? And now here again is our star, Elizabeth Scott, and our producer. Certainly no star in Hollywood fits the word glamorous more completely than our own lovely, proudly we hail star, Elizabeth Scott. Thanks, Liz, for a very versatile performance. Thank you, C.P. It was fun. You know, Liz, you were wonderful in your last picture, I Walk Alone, but I couldn't quite go along with that title. No? Why? No one knowing you would ever allow that to happen. <laughs> You're very kind. I understand that the movie fans in the recent poll selected you as one of the most cooperative stars in Hollywood. Yes, C.P., I made it with Lassie and the photo finish. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Liz, I dare say there's no star who makes a greater effort to meet her public than you do. Well, I believe in it, C.P. You've traveled all over the country, haven't you? Yes, and I've made so many wonderful friends. And didn't you go to England? That's right. Uh, what were the, your impressions when you returned? Well, I, I returned with a better realization of, of how small our world really is and how America's looked to for leadership and goodwill. And two, I returned very grateful for the privilege of being an American. That's something all of us should remember. But again, Liz, thanks for a top performance here on Proudly We Hail. I enjoyed it. But before I get away, C.P., what's the playbill going to be for next time? Next week, our story is called The Angel of Clarksville. It's a simple yet eloquent story of a woman whose basic goodness was a source of inspiration to all who knew her, whose great devotion to her husband provides a tale of drama and courage. And we have real assurance of a good program, for our star will be that fine dramatic actress of motion pictures, Ruth Warwick. That's a must, C.P. I'll be listening. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Elizabeth Scott. Goodbye. Be sure to join us, ladies and gentlemen, when your theater of stars presents The Angel of Clarksville, starring Ruth Warwick. And until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Elizabeth Scott appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Script was by Rich Hall, with the orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. Remember next week on Proudly We Hail, Ruth Warwick in The Angel of Clarksville. Proudly We Hail is transcribed in Hollywood for convenient release at this hour. This is Wendell Niles speaking.